felt like I it, I was being forced to make a choice. If I complained about it, it was going to cost me, you know, there would be ramifications, there would be consequences. It would mean I was going nowhere. Patricia Price is a former royal engineer who suffered sexual harassment while serving in the armed forces more than 20 years ago and could only talk about what she'd experienced in abstract terms to her sergeant. So we talked about it like it was a... a like it was pretend. Like I didn't want to bring it into the room because it was so shameful. One, two, three, three, up! But findings of the We Also Served report has shown that it's still a problem today and that it's quite often the case that it's only once they leave the forces that women report sexual assaults because they don't feel like they can while serving and that research on the impact of experiencing sexual assault and harassment during service is urgently required. The few people that I said, what am I going to do? They said, keep your mouth shut. We've all been through it. So yes, I've been through it. And I know many, many of my, served, you know, women who have served that are, I'm still close friends with. I don't know anyone that, I don't know any of them that haven't. You've got to remember that the military is a fairly unique environment in which you are often working and living uh, with the same people. So, um, you know, if, if you're reporting uh, these kind of things, um, there is a fear that that won't be kept, um, you know, anonymous, that people will know and label you as, uh, you know, a troublemaker, potentially. The report is the first major report on female veterans involving almost 30 organisations. It's also the first to capture the full range of health and wellbeing issues affecting service women and veterans from work-life balance all the way up to serious sexual assault. And it's collated the findings of 50 previous studies and also conducted interviews. One of the other main findings in the study was that women who have left the forces don't always identify as a veteran. Many have difficulties renegotiating their identity from military to civilian life. The evidence presented in the report suggests that the male-dominated nature of the veteran support sector may be discouraging women from accessing help. I love being called an ex-soldier, but I don't... I'm not going to put my hand up and say I love being called a veteran because it tends, it tends to be perceived as male. You say a veteran, most people think of a man. Female veteran sort of forces the distinction, I guess, which can make some people uncomfortable because they assume, make assumptions about what it means and how they, how they have to then look at you. They don't know what your identity is. I think that's the uncomfortable part. The report also found that women's leadership and career progression is an issue. It recommends that there needs to be a better understanding of the impact that career disadvantage during service may have on transition to civilian life. It's only been a few years since women have been able to serve in all roles. So there is some of this research that will have come out before that, uh, and that may be um, reflected in the fact that they don't feel that wider society recognises that despite though, them, those roles not having historically been open to them, they were still in frontline support roles for many, many years. Um, I would hope that, you know, both this report and also perhaps wider um, awareness that women can now serve in these roles, that we will start to see uh, a change. Other recommendations look at improving employment support and resettlement, but overall highlights that a lot more research is needed into women's experience post-service. The report has come up with 30 recommendations to improve women's experience in the military, including a need to change a culture that allows sexual harassment to go unreported. Amy Wiltshire, Forces News.